Will, we need a new tutorial. Hurry up. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to tie a fly. Yeah, put the hook on this thingy. This should and tie this sucker up. Get this uh, tin foil thing. Tie it right on. Now this yellow creature. Then you cut off a slab. This friggin' scissors suck. Wait, 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 what? I don't even know, I don't know how to tie a fly. How am I supposed to do a tutorial? Wait, there's two creatures? Why is it so hot in here? Hurry up, hurry up. I'm doing this. Now just, just put the third on there. This ain't actually that bad. Now just get that creature right on there. What a masterpiece. How's it going guys? Josh here from Fins and Tails. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. Um, Will's never tied a fly before. This is gonna be his first fly. So we figured we'd put him, into the, put him right into the thick of it and uh, do a video about it. So today we're gonna make a video for, I mean, you can watch it if you've tied flies before, but this video is gonna be pretty uh, stripped down, um, pretty basic, I guess. The idea behind it was maybe you have a grandparent that give you fly tying stuff like I did when I was a kid or maybe you ordered a kit on Amazon or got it from Bass Pro or maybe you're like Will and uh, a co-worker give you some stuff and you just want to learn how to tie a fly and I mean there's a ton of videos on YouTube that you can learn from and I'd encourage you to go watch those videos. We're gonna tie a Mickey fin today. I don't know if you guys have ever fished these before. They're pretty common pattern. Um, they originated in like the 1950s and really good. You can catch trout, bass, pickerel, all kinds of stuff. So it's a versatile pattern and the best part is it's easy to tie and it only requires minimal material to start if you just want to go buy a couple of things um, just to get into tying your first fly. You don't have to go buy a bunch of hackle and stuff that costs a lot, but you can just buy simple materials that um, can just get you into it and get you interested and see if you like it before you dive in deep. Without further ado, we're gonna get into the video. So here we go, Will. You ready? Will. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so step one. We're gonna, we got our hook here. We got a size six streamer hook. Um, we're using Musthead, but there's tons of brands out there. You want something that has some length to it. A streamer hook has a longer shank than a normal hook. First off, you get your hook and you wanna put it on your vise. Okay, so first tip here for you guys. Um, you don't have to be super fussy on how good you're wrapping the body, especially with this pattern, but I'll give you guys a tip on how to get it more even. So when you start wrapping the thread on your shank, your hook, make sure you have a tag in here. See this tag in? And leave enough room that you can pull tension on this, right? And if you leave it at an angle, right? See this angle here? When you tie and you wrap onto this, it will automatically force your thread down on the shank of the hook and it can be pretty darn even. So the reason that this is good is because when you use pencil, which we're gonna use in this fly, um, it, it, it's good to have uh, a flat, clean surface for your shank so that there's no like humps and bumps on your, on your pencil. So having this, 
as good as possible, as good as you can do, is a good thing. So like, don't stress about it too much, but at the same time, try your best to do an even amount of thread on your shank. Okay, so once you've got your thread to your barb on your fly here, the next thing you wanna do for this fly, the Mickey fin, is our body material, and that is a flat tensile. You wanna tie the opposite end upward. So if I want my silver side to show, I tie my gold up, and I'll show you why. But basically, that's what you do. You get your tag in here, and you just tie it in. Start with a couple loose wraps, and then you can cinch it down and tighten it. Obviously, don't break your thread in the process, but get a good, good amount of pressure on there. You wanna get your thread out of the way. What I mean by that is you wanna do some even wraps back to your head here. So I'm gonna wrap just, yeah, about a couple centimeters back from the head and then leave my thread there. And then that gives me enough room to work that body the whole way up. So we'll get Will to do it here. Right there. Yeah, you don't want to go the whole way to the head. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you kind of what happened to Will there. That wasn't intentional either, that just happened. I was, I was kind of hoping it did so I could show you guys how not to do that. <laughs> but basically, I guess another tip is you want the, this tensile to overlap slightly. Like you want it to be spaced out enough that it's even, um, but then again, don't stress too much, but you want it as even as, as, even as you can get it. But I'm gonna show you here, I'll just build up my body here, get you to the end. Keep a lot of tension just to make sure that it doesn't unravel on you. But um, the easier way to do it is bring this here and then use your opposite hand that you would use to hold your bobbin normally. Use that as a way to wrap over the tensile. Make sure you have good pressure on here, but now you can let go. But what I like to do is I like to keep that pressure until I get about four turns, five turns, just to make sure it doesn't unravel because that sucks. So after you do that, cut off your tag and you should be left with a little bit here and you can just wrap that in securely. And there you go. There you go. So now we got about a couple centimeters from the head here. So yeah, on the Mickey fin, we got two colors here. We got yellow, red, and then we layer it back with yellow again. And this is what we call our wing. So for this pattern, it's a streamer. Um, and it's specifically, it's a bucktail streamer. So we're gonna be using bucktail. And we got yellow dyed bucktail and red. And I'll see how Will's doing. Okay, so one other tip I can show you guys. So Will just got his cut here, um, but a little hack. Don't worry about it if you don't have it in the budget to get one right now, but here's an elk hair stacker. And these are really good for deer hair and uh, elk hair flies like caddises and things like that. And they just even the tips of the hair um, just to make it a lot nicer. But at the same time, we can use it, we can use it for, the uh, for the wing of this fly as well. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So pretty much, another thing is less is more with this kind of fly. Like you can 
get in a lot of trouble if you tie try to tie too much hair on because you're you'll find yourself struggling with trying to fit it all on there so i'm going to show you what i mean but first off we'll cut it like like we did like will just did but you can see that they're not all even right and it doesn't really matter with a streamer fly like this but just to get it a little bit cleaner i'm gonna just pick through a couple of the shorter ones and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this stacker here. Okay, so we get it in the stacker. And then you can just give it a few tunks on the, usually on a table, but just for the video, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to hit it on my hand. But yeah, just do that. Pull it out. And it's, it's pretty even, but not too even. I find the bucktail doesn't get too even which we don't want we don't want it to look we don't want it to look too even but just get a better balance on your on your fly especially when you're putting it on there with different colors so once we do that we now got to tie it in and another thing you want to keep in mind is you don't want to tie it in too long like you don't want the wing to be the whole way back here but i guess as a rule of thumb especially for this fly is you want it to be about a length and a half of the body. So we got one length of the body here, and then we'll go another half. So about like that is what we're gonna aim for. And then once you do that, size it up here, give it a pinch and pinch your shaft of your hook as well. So you're pinching the wing and the hook at the same time. This is just to hold it in place. And then once you do that, you want to give it a nice couple loose rats first. Pretty loose rats. Don't pull any tension on it yet. And then after you get two rats around, then you can pull it tight. And this make sure it makes so it's uh, not gonna spread all over the top of the hook, but it keeps it keeps it even and nice. So once you do that, give it three or four more rats in there, and then you're able to cut the access off. So, and then see you're left with a little bit of tag there. You can just wrap that in there like that. So once you get your yellow tied in there, it's just the same step for the next color, which is red. And you just repeat the same steps that I just explained. Okay guys, so once we get our yellow, red, yellow, we've got that all tied in there. We're to our last step. And that is to tie it off. And the way that we tie it off or finish the fly, um, first we build our head, which you just, after you trim each access hair, you just build and make sure there's no hair sticking out. Basically you just wrap your thread until there's no head left. But then after that, the way that we get this fly to not unravel again um, is a tool called a whip finisher. And I guess I didn't mention this before, but Will has tied one fly before, and that was for a practice run of this video. And the hardest thing, or the thing that he struggled the most with was using this tool. And it can be tricky. Like at times, it is frustrating when you're, when you're first starting. But once you get used to it and you do it a couple times, it's like you can, you just do it with your eyes closed. You uh, get your top hook here and you want to bring that over to your thread and hook it in there, right? Then you get your thread and you bring it over this hump. And then with your bobbin, you bring your bobbin up and you have a triangle, but I'll show you the triangle more when you spin it. So 
Basically, hum, okay, hulk, hump, thread. Then this is what you do. Twist towards yourself. So you're twisting this way. And then pull with your bobbin. So you have a triangle here. See it? This is your triangle. But you want to bring it down to your fly. So you twist. And then you got a triangle here. And your objective is to wrap this hook, the thread that's on this hook, over this thread. And it makes like a knot that won't come undone. So basically you just wrap that hook line over this th about four times. And once you do that, you then bring this hook, this hump here up and it unconnects from the line and now you're left with this little loop and all you have to do after that is just pull with this hand your bobbin pull it tight and then once you have it tight you can just release the hook and there you go you finished your fly and yeah you just cut it off and you can do it a couple times like i usually like i'll try it like a bigger fly i might whip it whip finish it twice um but pretty much yeah that's your mickey finn there and yeah, we'll see how Will does. So we'll see if I can give him some pointers. Keep this horizontal with your eye of your hook. Keep that straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up. Pull up out there. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta give yourself some slack there with this on the hook. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now you're good. Now pop it off. Yeah, and pull it tight. You Okay guys, so uh, got our finished product here. Got our Mickey Finn, and you can tie these in all different kinds of sizes, but basically the motive of this video was to get you guys encouraged to go and maybe tie a fly. Maybe you've never tied one before. Maybe it's been 20 years. But uh, yeah, I just wanna encourage you guys, get out there, go buy a couple items. I mean, you only have to get three things. You have to get some bucktail and some tensile and some thread and some hooks, of course. Other than that, you don't need a lot to get into this this pattern specifically, and you can catch fish on it. So I guarantee you, once you catch your first fish on your own fly, you'll you'll be hooked, and you'll just you'll just want to tie all your patterns. But yeah, I just want to thank you guys once again. Um, yeah, we don't want this channel to be unapproachable. We don't want fly fishing and fly tying, hunting anything. We don't want that to be this far off thing for maybe someone getting into the sport, or or maybe you want to teach your kid how to do these things. We want to thank you guys for watching. Um, well, what do you think? That's pretty good. I did a pretty good job. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. What do you think? Do you, do you, uh, are you gonna start tying or what? Yeah, I might have to start tying, get a collection going, get ready for the for the fishing season. Yeah, we have to. What would you say to the people at home? Is it as hard as you thought it would be? Uh, it was quite hard. The whip finish was kind of hard, but like, it's enjoyable. Like, just learning how to do it and stuff. It's Definitely something to practice and get used to. So, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, just wanna thank you guys. Just wanna thank you guys. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw in the video there, but like and subscribe, leave a comment, fins and tails.